Hello everyone, this is GrayShop170 bringing you a company for us to replay, brought to you by myself. Why? Because this was such a good game, I really wanted to show you guys. And don't worry, I want to thank all of you for saying in those replays. If you don't know how to send a replay, I have a, literally a video on my channel that shows you how to send in a company for us to replay. But, of course, if you want to send me that replay, of course, go to my Facebook or my or my email just add the attachment which again if you look at that video you can see how to and you can send me a replay I'm looking at a lot of good replays lately have a lot for coming up so again thank you guys for sending those in um but in any case to say 3v3 on a map i really don't showcase montherm um hopefully i'm getting that name correctly it's a really interesting map because it's technically it's a 2v2 and a 1v1 honestly and you may be asking yourself, why is that? Well, because two players spawn, you can see here, uh, 151 and Yavert are in this location. Okay, and they have, of course, their defense. I like how it's like now they switched it to bunkers and this. That's pretty good. Because, no offense, I like, I, I personally like these flat guns a lot more than machine guns because this will do damage to vehicles a lot more than those NGs. But in any case, yeah, so reversing three players, reversing Cube, Dante, and Maxim show you the ranks pretty good ranks I would say about average with a uh, oh, roughly about the same as us so anyway I'm gonna I'm um, of course OKW so is my brother and Yavert is from Mach while we have one Soviet and two British now the reason why I say this because these bridges kind of cut off the map so you can destroy these bridges but again um, you can essentially isolate an entire side if you want to, which is a really, really cool idea, but it's almost never implemented. It's one of the best things about this map because it gives the idea that it's going to be like Sittard Summer where you see people blocking bridges. But honestly, most likely what you would do is you would um, have, if you like kill either side, you would then like destroy the bridges so they can't reinforce and then focus all your efforts in at one point. Anyways, you can see, dealing with conscripts right now, he's like, like in the conscript blob. Um, so he's pushing up a lot of forces. On the left side here, we have a Vickers. Uh, again, I like my brother's idea about hiding in the corner here, but it's just not working out very well. Yavert is, uh, uh yeah, Yavert's, uh, trying. He's holding pretty here as an MG in this building. Really nice, holds his tire position. But this, he has a Vickers over here. Vickers, of course, will suppress enemy infantry at a pretty good rate and a pretty good clip. So he can't really do all that much. On my side, unfortunately, the concert guy moved up. I'm moving back. My Kubel. In the meantime, I'm moving up. I'm just going to keep these guys here. Because, again, why would I leave them? It's like they're easily going to defeat these conscripts. Which, by the way, he's conscript spamming, as you can see. Move up Stern Pioneers. I'm like, okay, close range. I can easily take out this unit. And you know what? I am, as we can see. Boom. Take out that unit before he has a chance to retreat. Again, low level retreat instantly. On the left side here, of course, my brother's fighting two different infantry squads and Vickers. He has multiple Volks, but unfortunately the Volks, even though he's getting behind heavy cover, which is a smart idea, unfortunately they're just being overwhelmed, uh, which kind of sucks. So, of course, this is going on. Uh, for this map, you have this upper portion. Uh, you have, like, the mid portion by the church area. That's kind of important because, again, church can oversight both areas. And, like, here, the main street goes all the way down to like this main courtyard and of course this is usually an MG stare off that where people come at multiple angles or like get up on these like real high like peaks and just fire down the enemy uh, you usually see their encampments bunkers stuff like that on either side to hold um, and then further on you have another courtyard this one has a nice statue as you can see here um, but of course the main thing is these buildings surrounding it so there are three buildings um, the middle building cannot fire upon the two other ones at least directly as you can see they can fire upon uh, through the multiple windows which is great and these smaller windows of course are also really nice but as you can see they also except for this one I think can, can't fire upon them that way so as you can see the British player is also focusing on my end uh, I've been kind of hampering this British guy not British Soviet player as we can see kind of killed a few of his conscripts and there's also focusing on scout cars which I'm like okay um, in the meantime, Yavert's trying to focus on mid. He has a couple mortars. He still has the MG. Really nice. Um, but of course, this British player is just trying to re really just fortify mid. And as you can see, they kind of are winning right now because they have, they have the majority of the points, including the middle points, which is very key. Very key. Now, how exactly is this going to play out? So my brother, on the other hand, is like, okay, counter the Vickers, get a Stern, uh, 
oh god, a Verkentenwerfer. And that's a really good idea, especially if you go camouflage. Has us on standby, waiting for it to come down. This guy is, uh, both his guys in, in um, the building. To be fair, he has all, there's five windows, so it's really, really high firepower rate. So one would actually be good enough, but he has two, so why not? Um, so at least we'll be able to hold here. Or at least, yeah, all I would. So good for him. Also, as you can see here, basically has some basic stuff. Unfortunately for the birch, I haven't really been able to get a lot of good stuff. Now, unfortunately, they know that I'm currently doing a lot better than my brother and Yavert. No offense, Yavert, I know you have mid. But anyway, this British guy is sending everything he can, and I'm just trying to push him back. Um, luckily, Stern Pioneers are really good at close range, but unless he focus fires. Um, now, I'm going to try to retreat this. Unfortunately, it does not work, and it does not retreat in my time. I don't know why it was a lag or something, but anyway... Stern Pioneer is trying to fight once again to retreat them. Luckily, he throws a Molotov Cocktail. Actually benefits me because he can't push up because of the fire. So thank you, stupid Sylvia player, for doing that. Anyway, stupid Sylvia player has scout cars. And he thinks that these scout cars are going to win in the game because they were going to go for an early game push, which is a good idea. Also glad he can't put snipers in those because, again, they have the sniper over there. But, you know, unfortunately, he's getting penal troops, which is really, really good against essentially any type of armor. Now, I would say this is a good position for an MG, but I'm actually going to say it's not. Simply because of the fact the enemy can easily get in this building. As you can see here, there's nothing for this building to fire back at. So you can easily attack and kill this building through just getting in this building, which you can easily get in through this little corridor. And by the way, as you can see, um, you can easily get in jumping through here, and you don't have to worry about being suppressed by the MG. So honestly, it's oh not good for holding a position. Now, Yaver was a pretty cool. Uh, he tried to come over here. Unfortunately, I couldn't really help him out. Um, as you can see, my force got pushed back, and I, I apologize to him, at least he stopped it so he didn't lose his, uh, sniper. Sniper's running away, being chased by the clown car with a broken engine, because, of course, that, uh, essentially what this one is, you put a flamethrower inside, you chase people down, and you kill infantry. This was actually the bane of a lot of people's existence in early Company Heroes 2. Not even kidding. This thing would cause people so much heck, it wasn't even funny. Um, so they nerfed it. There was actually a there was actually a thing where they added I like it's like they nerfed it and they're like yeah then we're gonna add a but then we're gonna make a Vickers with the flamethrower because you know that way people won't have to get this flamethrower combo. And then also another thing that people really really like to do was put snipers in these scout cars. Oh my god that was annoying because you would essentially have you sniper teams in these things and just mo mobile anti infantry killing machines. It was insane. Anyway, pushing on my infantry, pushing on my Kubel, trying to retake this position. Anyway, he thinks he had this little, like, scout car is going to be great because, you know, he's going to put his guys inside. He's like, yay. I have three Verken, uh, Panzer Shreks. Three? No, two. One missed. One hit. That thing's going to be pushed back. Luckily, my brother has a Luke's, and this thing is great at killing infantry. Unless that infantry has Piots, which, as you can see, they do. But... Um, or anti, any type of anti-tank. Now, anti-tank, you may, you may state, it's like, oh, um, you know, the Soviet player doesn't have that, and you're right, he didn't really focus on that tech tree. So, as you can see, my brother's little, uh, unit is going to absolutely demolish this thing, because, you know, that's what it's good at. He does have a scout car, but it's running for the hills, don't blame it. Pretty much this, uh, little flame guy is gonna die. Yeah, and Luke's is great at killing infantry. Good for him. Now, they do uh, have an MG. This is the MG42, I think. I want to assume. Can't see it. I'm going to assume it's the MG. We'll see when it fires. I want to say that's a Vickers, but... Yeah, it's a Vickers. You can hear the machine gun fire. You can see the light up. It's a Vickers. Now, he's going to run up. think he's going to throw AT grenades. My brother's not that stupid. He's just going to retreat and just open fire upon this thing. And then the Grideers, of course, with the... Uh, G43s will just snipe that infantry. Now, they are coming with a flank, but as you can see, my brother's going to focus fire on that infantry, and there, and also on the, uh, Vicar, um, I'm sorry, the Universal Carrier, which pushes that thing back. Now, also, he's, he's trying to move by in heavy cover, so he doesn't get shot at. Uh, I'm trying to get some micro in, so that way he doesn't get hit. Again, he's doing okay, not doing great. Now, I also have one, so essentially, it's two of these things, and you may be asking yourself, but that's a bad idea. Well, they've only really had just basic anti-infantry, not really a lot of anti-tank, so at initially it was like, oh, if they're infantry focusing, I can focus on this. And to be fair, if you look, they just screwed themselves, because as you can see, they focused in the building. Now there's a flamethrower hitting point blank at it, and they're just like, yeah, we're going to stay here. And, oh, as you can see, that instantly got wiped. Now they do have more units, which unfortunately is going to kill this thing, but luckily with two of these, uh, 
Oh, which McCods? Uh, Luke's is where at least be able to push these things back. Even though they're pushing up, there's so much it, there's so much ar fire going on in this thing. It's incredible. Now they do have a Bofors here, as you can see, which is again they're trying to put up this great line of defense that's what the british like to do um it's really good uh but the problem is you can't move up because you waste a lot of manpower holding in one area so it has its benefits i also like my brother's flank right here just firing like crazy on this thing like yeah get back get back so close to killing it but alas he does not now this unit also is like why do you leave this here there's a loops right here you're very lucky this thing oh no it does die okay as you can see, he pretty much lost all of his infantry in that push. Now, we do have, unfortunately, another uh, issue, as as you can see, because, again, there's this guy, and he does have a lot of, he does have a large blob that instantly flanks his loops. And I have troops here, unfortunately, that's slowly being pushed back. Luckily, I am able to fortify this area, and I have a bunker over here to prevent a flank, and a bunker over here along with an NG. And essentially, what I'm going to be doing is supporting my brother and Yaver in this location as much as possible, and also, as you can see, getting a Stuka to cancel the blobs. So actually, we're not doing too bad. Uh, the Soviet player is actually pretty weak. Uh, he lost quite a lot of forces. This guy lost a ton of men, so he no longer has the front lines. He's basically focusing on fortifications which is a method it is something you can do but like i said if you put a lot of stuff down and think you can hold an area that can backfire if the enemy is constantly able to hit that location while you cannot hit back uh we can see here the scout car moving around it's like yeah we're gonna move up we're gonna be great and boom yeah not so good are you mine unfortunately kind of misses the kind of you know target location um, it's just trying to move around here. Unfortunately, my brother is just dealing with a lot of BS right now. So is Yavert, as you can see right over here. Uh, uh, luckily, he does have stormtroopers. I should probably go over doctrines right now. So I went fortifications to lock down this location and move over. Uh, Yavert went lead troops. That way he could get the Tiger Rays. He likes he, Panzer Tactician is one of the best upgrades you can possibly. Yeah, I'm sorry, abilities you can use because that literally will save your tank. Fortunately, that unit does die. I feel really bad for Yavra, and as you can see, he doesn't really have a lot of units. SU-76 moves along too, so they're pretty much focusing over here. In the meantime, I'm trying to pull this guy back by capturing the territory and then moving over in this location. Unfortunately, I do die from a this goddamn 17-pounder, which I didn't even know was there. Um, so as you can see, he's kind of focusing on this location. I'm going to send what, whatever I can, as you can see over here, to fight it, along with my Stuka on standby to hit him with a direct Stuka bomb as soon as possible. Now... Um, Yavert also has the Stormtroopers, which are really good because you get STG-44s with them, and they become very, very powerful. Uh, you can also equip them with G-43s and Panzer Sharks, which make them a good overall combo against infantry. I throw a bunch of fire grenades to kill this, uh, MG. I think it's an MG-42 that's located in there. Um, keep going. As you can see, it captured territory. So even though we are losing points, we have majority on this side, which really helps. And if I can get some armor, I'll try to attack Dante as soon as possible. And try, you know, a successful base assault. If you want to see a bad one, you can check out my previous replay. Uh, my brother hasn't really picked anything, but he will be going... Uh, I feel bad for him, special operations. But the info... The re but he does that for recon, which kind of helps. But honestly, I think... Uh, maybe elite armor would have been better for him. Uh, because of the Sturm Tiger, but again, I feel like he did uh, that the w everything he could with special operations to make that really really good Now they went terror tactics. I hate this doctrine because it's literally Very anti-infantry focused as you can see terror tactics is meant to be like that But you get shock troops which are great against close quarters, which again I found out over here So I knew he went something uh, as soon as you start seeing that like this You know he went the most likely terror tactics because this propaganda makes infantry pretty much be suppressed or retreat um, they also get a ha they also get a howitzer. They get a flamethrower tank, which is really good. It also goes a crocodile, but you get the point. Yeah, we're trying to push up, kind of being pushed back. My brother actually pushing up, doing quite a lot of damage. Fire a lot of fire grenades on this point. We're gonna kill that MG most likely and taking up here. So he's actually doing pretty good at countering. Um, even though that unit should probably retreat. Um, really surprised that MG isn't dying more, but I guess that part of the building hasn't catch caught fire yet. Whatever, that's weird. Anyway, uh, moving on, moving on, uh, wow, actually, this guy's nothing, okay, so anyway, um, anyway, they both went commando, and commando doctrine, is essentially, the, it's great, because you get the glider, glider is great for the commando unit, but again, easily to kill it when it lands on the ground or nearing, mortar crew is pretty good, it's 150, it's not too bad, but the big, the big enchilada is air supremacy, where you do a lot of bombs. Here's the thing, you do have a lot of munitions, you can't use it. It's it's a very munitions-heavy special ability. So if you don't have it, 
you're not going to be good. Now, of course, unfortunately, this Soviet guy is going to focus more on uh, his, his shock troops and going to try to push try to push up. Now, in the meantime, I have a Stuka. And here's one thing you don't do with a Stuka. Or one thing you don't do with just in general. You don't make it so your goddamn encampments are in a line. And I love it how I hit this. And it's like, okay, well, you know, I hit it. So that's doing okay. Also, as you can see, he's putting everything he can into fortifications. That's all he's doing. That's all he's trying to do. Whatever. It's a tactic. I try to move up my Kubel to try to kill this thing. So close to killing it, but unfortunately, before I can retreat, it just gets mass murdered. Um, here's a great thing. He has shock troops, okay? I have an MG. Start suppressing him. Instead of just instantly, like, falling back or just, like, you know... Like, hey, maybe we should do something different. He just stays there. It's like, you know you have... Yeah, there we go. And he retreats. It's like, you know you have smoke grenades. I'm not trying to be mean, but you could have smoke grenaded that. Now, I pulled this unit out to because I thought they were going to smoke grenade and rush it. But apparently, I was overthinking it. Also, my brother kind of pushes up here. But this giant infantry blob is really annoying. Also, they have one. They have two. Three bofers. Three bofers and a 17 pounder. That's a lot of fortifications. And as you can see, they're going a lot of just like firing down, which is kind of annoying. Um, as you can see here, because it's very hard to counter with mortars or AT when you have the bofers firing into the sky saying, Doop de doo, we're gonna fire down artillery on you, and there's nothing you can do about it until unless maybe you still get to death but don't worry we're gonna fortify it so that's why as you can see uh yavert goes a lot of uh uh he goes uh, gets a panzerwerfer now i should probably mention at this point we um, my brother and yavert want to quit but i said to keep going i honestly don't think they realized how easy like this how low this guy was or how easily i was pushing back the soviet player and the only good player they had was the mass blob of uh this guy Kind of running around the battlefield doing his thing. But as you can see here, I try to throw a bunch of fire grenades, try to get panzer strikes, try to kill this thing. Because if I can kill this, I can kind of move over and kill the 17 pounder easily. So again, I'm trying to help out as much as possible with my ally. Here, I put a bunch of fire on it, slowly barbecuing the bofer. And also, as you can see here, finishing it off with the panzer warfare shot. I want to thank Yavard for killing him because god damn, that guy's annoying. Anyways, you can see here, this... The, there's this SU-76 here doing artillery and whatnot. He killed this encampment. I'm countering. I'm countering the best way I know how. So I got this thing. And for those who know, it's a Pac-43. And for those who don't know, the Pac-43 in my mind is better than the 17-pounder. You may be asking yourself, but Grey Shot, it can't like fortify itself, and it's very weak um, to enemy fire. And you could be saying, to, you could be, and I would say instantly, yes. Also, I put this in this location that way you couldn't AT really would be very hard also i didn't know this apparently terror tactics hurts this building as well i also activated armor piercing rounds he has to move up the su-76 but here's the great thing they move up the su-76 this thing is right in range boom ladies and gentlemen remember this thing could fire through any destructible obstacle so this thing is going to instantly die and with the shock troops being pushed back i essentially defeated once again the soviet player now he's going to get katusha and he's going to start focusing on artillery uh which kind of sucks but that's the counter ultimate counter to fortifications. Fortifications, you lock down territory. Guess what's the ultimate thing that anti-locking down the territory? It's using a quote-unquote artillery unit of some type. Now, unfortunately, my brother's dealing with a mass blob of units. And as you can see over here, he doesn't have a lot of units. He has some, but he also has a ton of manpower. So I can't exactly say, you know, it's not working. Also, here's the attacking my brother used, and I really like this idea. Infiltration grenades like crazy, and then a bunch of fire grenades. And as you can see, infiltration grenades actually worked. They actually did quite a lot of damage. If he had one more, he probably could have beat it. So, I like the idea of infiltration grenades. It did do a lot. One more could have done it. And maybe finishing off fire grenades. Now, Yavert's AT gun did manage to kill this. And also, as you can see, he's trying to target the, this location. And once again, this guy up here, which, by the way, I should probably mention, Cube, as we see, is a pretty decently high-ranking player. Is going, once again, more fortifications. Again, he wants to lock down this territory. And he, but he's neglecting himself to a support role, which is good. Because right now, we kind of need a support role. 
I did a Stuka round, he hurt this uh, the infantry a bit, but not all that much. Luckily, as you can see here, as soon as they move up even more, this headquarter is going to open fire upon them, causing lots of damage since they're on prox close proximity and causing them to retreat. So honestly, even though my brother did lose that, he didn't lose anything else, which is good. Um, now they're in a full retreat back, they have to run all the way back to base. In the meantime, I'm still for holding this location, and they're just throwing everything they can. As you can see here, they're using the mortar stuff. They're going to... Yeah, they're, they're both using mortar over here, I should probably say. Trying to push me back. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ, I didn't realize how powerful this ability was until, like, oh, there's just two going on at once. Luckily, again, this bunker's still here, so it's protecting with that flank. Unfortunately, I have to still protect the other flank, but I don't think they're... I, this Soviet guy is just like testing my flank, but I'm holding. I'm doing everything I can to hold this position as much as possible. Yavrit, on the other hand, as you can see here, he's uh, got two star mortar. He's trying to push over here. He has the stormtroopers with the STG 44s, which I really, really love. Wait, are these STG 44s? Yeah, they are. Okay. Also, as you can see, a T gun instantly counters these British fortifications. Simple stuff like that. I feel like a lot of people don't really use a T guns to kill this stuff, but really, it honestly is a good way to counter. Also, Nice try with a grenade. Actually does quite a lot of damage. We can also see here with this upgrade, he went Hammer Doctrine um, with British, so we got Air Burst Shell. So as you can see, you know what he kind of went, at least. And as you can see, he's kind of losing a lot. Um, he has all the upgrades, but he went too heavily on fortifications, which I feel like was a big upset for him. And a reason why he's not doing very well. Also, I find it weird that he has all the fortifications down south, and he has this random base up north. Which is kind of weird, because again, the guy with the most units is over here, and his... For it, yeah, it's it's just weird. Also, he finally got this base upgraded, so whatever. He also went hammer. Now, as you can see, this, this Soviet guy, I put another bunker here in the meantime. He finally does smoke, which I'm like, congratulations, you're finally, you know, have a brain. But the thing is about it is also, I put my headquarters here. So it's the ultimate counter. Because as you can see, as soon as they like move up, try to let's say they try to take over my pack 43, this gun will open fire upon them. So which is why I kept it here. I probably should have moved it a little bit to the left. But I was too worried too much that if I put it over any more, it, it would make it easier for AT gun fire or SU-76 fire to hit it. Luckily, the bunker over here is just firing at will, which is great. They're trying to burn it out, but I'm moving up more infantry. Probably, I put my... um. So I, as you can see, I put the mechanized here, and I'm going to put the uh, medical here. The reason I do that is very simple. I didn't want to put too co far close because they, st they started using Katusha fire over here, which is really annoying, and I couldn't really counter. Also, you can see here they got Churchill as a really heavy armor. So once again, this maximum guy is doing a really, really good job of just hammering us. Um, now I do a Stuka round, kill a shock troops, make them fall back, and kill the guy, push the guy out of the building. So this guy's still alive. Keep stirring pioneers here in case they try to rush up. Heal this bunker. I'm going to move around. Probably try to heal this as soon as possible. My brother got a Panzer IV, which I feel like is a good idea again. But as you can see here, they have so many piots that it's just going to be ridiculous for that thing to even fight him. Luckily, again, he gets a nice shot off with the Panzer IV. This Panzer IV is really nice. It's actually a little bit more powerful than the normal one. It has side skirts, so that gives it an extra bonus. Also, as you can see with the upgrades, the upgrades to it make it extremely, extremely powerful. So even though my brother's having difficulties, at least Yavrik's still trying to give a good fight here and holding, while I'm just holding this point really, really well, and then supporting my allies with Stuka fire and also Panzer Strike fire as much as pos possible. Man, I can't talk. Um, hopefully I'm giving more detail than last game. I feel like last game. I'm sorry if you guys felt like, oh my god, why was it that game even necessary for you to cast? I'm like, well, it literally shows what not to do in a base attack, and I feel like there are very few games that you get to a point where you can attack the enemy base and it fails so epically. That's what I put on. Now luckily again with enough AT fire at and everything he's able to push the enemy back. But unfortunately he does the thing where he just smokes and then just like stays and then goes through the smoke. Which I find really annoying that Churchill just has the ability to go through there. And I like how the Panther is like, yeah, it's like, okay let me try to get in here and fight this thing. And he's trying. But he's also, he doesn't want to get too far in, because again, that could put him in a really bad situation. So, yeah, he's just going to focus on the mortar, and that's, I think, the smarter move. We can also see a lot of smoke coming down. Uh, not exactly sure what that's from. Maybe? Mortar crew? But I don't... Oh, you know what? Did they even use the... No, oh, wait. I was going to say smoke raid, but it doesn't look like anyone used it. Come on, one more shot. Oh, no, you have it run. 
Oh no, do they have a firefly? They have an SU-85. Okay, so we did get that. He does smoke to try to run away, but they're still firing P outside him, which I find stupid because he just deployed smoke. But he did manage to get away, which is good for him. And also, Panzerwerfer on standby. Panzer IV still here. They managed to push out that blob. Mostly, kind of just moved. And I'm still, I'm still trying to deal with this force. Luckily, again, I still have my bunkers. Still alive. He healed them pretty well. And also, I have my Pack 43, which, as you can see, has been able to do pretty, uh, you know, scare off their armor, mostly. Now, unfortunately, he's, like, moving up. And, unfortunately, his Panzerwerfer is going to, I think, my... Oh, my God. I My brother moved up his. And they retreated instantly. No idea why they retreated. I think they thought that there was something special coming in. But they instantly retreated. They could have really screwed up both armor units, but whatever. They're using more confusion fire trying to remove me from this location. And as you can see, it's kind of getting annoying. I'm still holding right now. I'm still doing a pretty good job at holding. But like I said, this is the far this is the best strategic point we have in this game. And I like his double assault. I really do. But it's just not working. Unfortunately, as you can see, they did just murder my bunker over here. But luckily, I do have my Panzer Headquarters. Also a two-star Stuka, which is, you know, doing pretty good. Now, unfortunately, uh, the enemy is over here. As you can see here, my brother does a little thing called infiltration grenades. And boom, bada, bing. Does a lot of damage to that uh, guy. Unfortunately, could have done more if he stayed in the building. But alas, this guy's actually pretty smart. So, you know. Now, luckily, again, um, they deploy a Firefly. As you can see here, that's what he focused on. He's no longer doing encampments. He did the direct rocket strike, which is why he's been using up a lot more munitions, which is why, as you can say, it's like, why do they do a bombing strike on you guys? Well, they're doing, they're just equipping their normal units with a bunch of really, really strong stuff. Which makes, which makes it really annoying. Wow, you can equip it with both SGG-44s and G-43s? How's that even possible? If all of them have assault right, what? I don't care. Maybe it's just giving the interrogation ability or something. Anyway, I get a panther. I push up, but he does like this instant raid thing uh, where he just like sacrifices the T-34 to hit me. I push back. He does terror attacks and get the IL-2 bomb. I pull back immediately. Still hitting him. Now, he's going to pull over a Churchill, okay? So they're going to move over their Churchill because they think, oh, we can kill a panther. And then he move over an SU-85. I see this. I know this. I pull over my pack 43 immediately. Immediately. And also SGG-44s, thank you, by the way, for deploying sword troopers, which, again, they are moved for, like, vetting up your troops, which I don't mind. I really like these storm troopers. I really think they're underused, and I feel like they should be used a lot more. They're really good infantry, really good anti-infantry. Also, we have a Firefly over here, so I'm still moving back my Panther. Pack 43 is hurting out. I'm trying to fire some Panzer trucks at this thing as well, I'll try to kill it. And as you can see here, my... my uh, Last shot with Pack 43 managed to kill this thing. Now they're still moving up a lot of forces. Um, I'm trying to hit them. This uh, Firefly is over here. Again, I'm trying to do what I can. But you can see they're using Katusha Fire to push me back. Luckily, a nice shot with the Pack 43 knocks out that. And they're going to move back their Firefly. Unfortunately, um, as you can see here, Gavard's also on the offensive and he's trying to push up with everything he can. Use a Stuka over here to kind of like push what's left of their infantry back, which kind of helps, kind of hurts some of it. Gonna have to pull back though. At least Stern Pioneers here just to like help. Luckily again, we have this thing here, which is gonna start firing over here and helping out. We go back on mid. Yavin's yeah, trying to push up, but unfortunately he's just being hit by the Bofors, which was a bad position also for that MG. But I think they try to capture it because again, we're kind of getting low on points, so that's a thing. Over here we have a uh, another IL-2 bombing strike at you know what. They killed the Pack 43. You know they killed the Pack 43 after killing two vehicles and me actually killing a third. This Soviet player is pretty much like at like he wasted a lot, a lot of armor and men trying to attack my place, and they really haven't gotten it. So that was a huge loss. In middle, this guy lost his Churchill. That was a big armor loss for him. Even though he has a ton of uh, fuel, he doesn't have the manpower to really get it back anytime soon. And of course, quit cube while well, he's been focusing more on infantry, which has really worked out for him. He did. His uh, Firefly did suffer a lot of damage, so he has to pull that back. So honestly, even though we didn't necessarily gain territory a lot with that, we were able to hold them back, which was a big win. A uh, big moral victory for us to take out so much of their stuff uh, and uh, keep us in the game. Now right now, as you can see, I have uh, still my Panther alive somehow, some way. This thing still managed to be alive. I'm getting out this. I'm getting to put a me medical that way I can heal my men. 
Uh, but fortunately, my brother's just healing with this. And it's just like, god dang it. So I move over my uh, Stuka and I keep thing units here. Like, okay, I'm at least holding this location, kinda. So I let me loop, move my Stuka over because this is just a blob upon blobs. And by the way, before you say... Oh, gray shot. What's 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 your definition of a blob? My definition of a blob is a unit that's literally within like there's like multiple units within like two or three uh, feet of each other. Decent Suka did a little bit of damage, not all that much. He kind of moved out of the way, so that was okay. But th luckily, that was my brother's Suka. My brother got a Suka, and as you can see, he also uh, yeah ever got another Panther. Also, we're putting bunkers over here to kind of help out. Um, I put a bunker over here that way it can't, it can't rush over my brother's unit uh, headquarters and kind of kill it. They tried to do that, didn't necessarily work, but they tried, which I'll give them credit for. Also, we can see here, I love these stormtroopers because you can see their camouflage ability. So again, they can camouflage themselves, which is really nice for capping territory while you're in negative cover. Really, really cool. I love again, I love these units. They're really, really effective. Hey, yeah, uh, sorry, yeah, for kind of blocking your panther, but whatever. Um, trying to deal with this massive thing coming in. Luckily, they kind of stopped themselves because, again, they called in artillery. So when my brother falls back, they literally have this artillery coming down. So whatever. He kind of pushes back in the meantime. They, one guy pulls back. Luckily, my brother has literally a ton of AT forces right here. And this thing, if he tries to use the rockets, it's going to suck. Because this thing, while good at fighting, you know, killing fortifications and armor it those rockets do nothing against infantry i don't know why you would think that it would do a lot yeah but also unfortunately my suka got misplaced i misclicked and while my bombs are coming down it's it probably could have killed all this it just like only fired a couple so that's why in case you're wondering what, what happened to my suka unfortunately the soviet player is getting a lot more ground so i have to re kind of refocus on my end gonna heal up my men put a mechanized kind of heals them up uh, my Panther's all ready to go, so I'm going to send that in. I'm also going to get a Panzer IV. I think I'll get that momentarily. Um, the reason I get that is simply because of the fact they have a lot of infantry. Not necessarily armor, so I want to kind of focus on that, and I figure that would be good against fighting a lot of their infantry. Um, any case, we can see my brother kind of pushing back against these massive blobs. And like this, I would consider a blob, because again, you're kind of focusing all in one corridor. You can see they're kind of going all the, they're pretty much all focusing together. That being said, we can see here, I think my brother's going to fire a lot of infiltration grenades. And also we have a stoop coming in. So, boom, that kind of eliminates a lot of his units, which is good. At least one squad and pushes them down in health. My brother has to pull back because of these terror tactics, which again, it's 80, it's only 80 munitions. So honestly, I like this a lot more than like it doesn't necessarily hurt infantry, but seriously, it does. When you that really stops people from capturing territory or advancing, at least for a period of time, which is why I wonder why people don't use that ability more often. Um, because again, if it, you don't necessarily, I feel like when people go like, what is it, the shock? Was it oh shock rifle or something where they have the flame barrage? The flame barrage is good at like stopping infantry. But it's not, people can just move out of the way. With that one, it's very hard to get an idea of what, where that unit's affecting. And since you can do it a lot more, it's better. Because, again, you're hurting the infantry. Now, again, we, I have my, they move over an AT gun. I'm like, okay, you want to do that? Well, fine. I'll move over my troops and kill your stupid mortar that's been annoying me God knows how long. Now, unfortunately, Suka's here. I'm going to instantly gonna pull that back. But, again, kind of do it on, like, his fort, like fortifications right here. Because he ever like, hey, I need a bomb strike. I immediately do. And he's like, oh, my God, great shot awesome now move back my stuka he's gonna keep doing the, sh the stupid yeah this thing which by the way recharges really quickly as you know the soviet and also as you know the soviets get a lot and i do mean a lot of munitions typically in a game and as you can see they're kind of focusing on munitions so that was their thing so i tried to move up didn't realize they had a kv flamethrower tank just like all in all at gun gets the final blow and i have to fall back which kind of sucks panzer force on standby though so that's pretty good um, keep that there. Yavert's at least taking more of mid, which is great. Probably should retreat this three-star mortar. But luckily, again, he has his MG here, which is doing nothing, by the way. And it's just being annihilated. You get enough of these. This is a blob. This is absolutely a blob. Because, uh, again, so many forces went in with such a small area. One mortar hit would be an amazing hit or stupid. Unfortunately, I'm not there. And unfortunately, it looks like he lost his Panzer Shrek. Also, he lost his machine gun. Uh, nice mortar hit does a little bit of damage against them. I don't care at this point. As you can see, he got a Firefly, and this guy's definitely come back. 
Uh, luckily, again, close range, Firefly doesn't do all that much, but if he does the rocket fire, on the other hand, then that could be an issue. SGG44 is waiting in the dust. I'm going to assume he's going to throw a grenade. Uh, like, one grenade right there is what I see happening, or a shock grenade. Just, uh... Just using the stun grenade to pretty much pin them would be great. We can see here he's trying to move around with fireflies. I feel like that's what they're trying to do. But I feel like they forget fireflies are only good against armor, not infantry. So, and I feel like they're like, oh, we'll just have anti-infantry with this. Luckily, the panther is in a really good location. Dodges the rocket, which is really nice. And is able to probably kill this firefly, which again, that's 50 munitions to boost it. Plus another 25 with the, the extra accuracy. So, yeah, doing a pretty good job. Anyway, as you can see here, my, my armor's been able to retake this area. Stuka's coming in, trying to do a little bit of damage. Does a, quite a bit. Also, panther for shot, I'm assuming. Yep, there it goes. And there goes a lot more of his infantry. And I like how this guy went from a really good fighting force to absolutely nothing in like two seconds flat. Brother's coming around. He has a lot of AT forces. A lot of it he's picked up because, again, he keeps losing his men. So he's like, oh, another Panzer Shrek. And that's literally from the former squad that died. Like so. It, man, perfect example. Could not have timed it better. Unfortunately, that's anti-armor, not infantry. So that is an issue. But luckily, we do have a bunker down here. So if they try to push up, of course, they're good. He knows he's like instantly like, oh, I'm going to kill this guy before he can. Well, unfortunately, my brother's like, I know you, you moron. <laughs> You're not going to come through here. <laughs> they do a little bit of damage over here. Bunker's going to suppress them, so that way they can't move up and they have issues. And with enough direct fire, if he can spread them out, uh, that way he can easily overwhelm these forces. Because, again, he's healing. They're not, and they're being suppressed. Also, a Panzer IV over here doing a pretty good job. Now, he does have some type of artillery or something coming in. I think... Is it this thing firing? I think it might be this artillery. Yet yeah, just in range. Also, the howitzer fire, so they're using everything they can. Luckily, luckily my, they retreated, so my brother's like, okay, I'll just move up. Also, my brother's a King Tiger, which is really good against this infantry spam. And as you can see, he's instantly pushing back up. So my brother's having a really great comeback. Again, he's not getting a Panther, because why would you? He's getting stuff that counter this infantry, which he's fighting. And then his own infantry is good at fighting the armor. Now, over here... I have the stupid KV flamethrower to deal with, which again, a panther is typically good at, and also the panzer headquarters is helping. I, 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 I stress helping, because uh, again, I can just hide it over here, and it just like pop, does some nice pop shots. Now, as you can see at the time, we may need to get some points. We may. We may. Um, I'm moving up my Stuka to try to do another fire, but as you can see, I kind of recently did it, didn't do a lot to them. But as you can see, I, I kind of hide my Panzer IV, which I kind of like, as you can see here. The, the, the AT guns can't shoot it for whatever reason, um, which I don't care. I think it's kind of being blocked by this little, like, pull, like whatever, this piece of cover. I'm going to kind of pull this thing back in the meantime. Try to capture this territory. As you can see, we're doing a pretty good job of capturing this. We have four points remaining. We need to really take this position. Panzer Strike firing. I don't have a Panther. I really don't have all that much. So it's really just Yavert holding here and my brother holding here. Um, the big thing. Luckily, uh, well, unluck well, yeah, luckily, my Suka's back. And they're kind of blobbing, kind of stuck together because of Pathfinding. Thank you, Pathfinding. So do a nice Suka bomb. Eliminate, hurt their armor, eliminate both AT guns and have my Stern Pioneers hold the center. Get MG to hold this position. Probably should decommission this tank. Stern Pioneer, I like how I, he sends over the uh, Stormtroopers with the SCG 44s, but there's only tanks over here. So they can't really do much. And those are all a goddamn flamethrower. He's like, hey, Grey Shot, I'm coming to help. And he sees the flamethrower. He's like, nope, nope, no way. He also has an MG 42 over there. Again, he recommissioned this tank, got it back. This guy's like, oh, let's push. And then a Stuka bomb and a King Tiger's like, sorry, no way. Sorry, you're not coming through here. So they're really kind of just like doing everything they can. Just like, again, take this position. Now, as you can see here, I'm going to retake this point. I'm going to try to fortify it, do what I can. And I see all these AT gun stuff like, ooh, free, free stuff. I'll take it. Now, unfortunately, as you can see here, he is getting a lot of armor they are the soviet guys trying to like he went from infantry focus and then like kind of a mix and now he's just going purely armor focus which i feel like with the soviets you don't do but anyway he's trying to stormtroopers trying to move in throwing a stun grenade i'm assuming he's throwing it over here but that kind of failed and they're going to get instantly killed by the el wow really he's going to live oh my god there's a bofa right here if he lives that would be incredible oh my god 
How did this guy live? Whatever, he lived. That's incredible. Anyway, Panther's moving back over here. Yes, Panther sucks versus infantry, but hey, you know what's good at? Just annoying infantry. That's the thing it's good at. Now, as you can see here, they did more of the white phosphorus stuff. We're still trying to hold. Um, luckily, my Stuka, I think, is four star. No, three star. So I can, like, fire from longer range. So I'm, I don't really have to worry about getting close. Luckily, again, my brother's trying to capture territory, just holding this position as much as possible. Probably should get out of this building. No offense, bro. Kind of dying. Now, I see these bombers. I'm like, oh, no. I kind of misjudge this location. So I kind of fall back. But I kind of, once again, misjudge. So you're going to see the effect of this bombing great uh bombing attack and yeah it's pretty massive it takes out this unit it takes out that unit and essentially it's gonna murder yeah my hq which really really sucks in the meantime i'm kind of saving up you may be asking yourself gray shot you have so much munitions why don't you upgrade your men or this bunker or stuff well it's very simple my brother has special operations as you can see and the reason we have that as well is that way in case let's say they take this territory or my brother's territory with all their men i'll activate this ability so my brother can give recon and this thing can just fire down artillery shells because this thing will this ability again ramps up artillery will just fire so many shells in a single area that they cannot capture that territory it's really really effective but it's very costly so i want to make sure i have enough munitions to hold this i see them capping it. i'm going to move up my panzer four again figure that they don't really have a lot of armor I'm going to try to pop shot the shock troops and move up and try to take it because again if i can try to keep them from capping this point that's better off for us fortunately they have s285 and a firefly over here so unfortunately that's not necessarily in the cards to hold panther's definitely being healed though and moving up more men so i'm trying to do that also we can see here um, this thing's barely on the last line. So you have their Katusha pretty close up. Their Firefly, unfortunately, is getting smarter. It misses me, but hits my fortifications, which sucks. Panzer IV is trying to make a hasty retreat. Should have probably done Blitz, but they're just charging anyway. Kind of lucky at this point, because he moves over with his Panther. My Stuka's right here. I was doing a long-range Stuka to try to knock out their artillery. Luckily, he fires at this, not at this. But they do fire with their SUD-5 at it. And they're, as you can see, they're trying to chase it, but I move back. Luckily, again, I'm trying to heal my headquarters in the meantime. The Panther by Yavert saved my butt. And literally, it was, I mean, he could have just focused over here. But he focused over here and killed this thing. And I'm just like, dude, let me try to see. Like, I will decap this point. Let me try to do that for you. Because it's the least I can do. Unfortunately, the flamethrower comes in. I'm like, uh, sorry. You know that promise I made to you? Can't really do that. Um, luckily, again, Yavert's own forces move up. He has a Brumbar, which kind of is just, like, annoying. Moves up and holds this location. Brothers King Tiger continuing to hold this location. Getting quite a few kills. 22. Not half bad for a tiger. This guy just King of Firefly. He's like, okay, I have to counter this. And yeah, it's 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 weird. It's not weird. It's it, I, I do like how we were able to turn the tide. <laughs> nice Duke of Bob. Um, I do like how we were able to turn the tide. It wasn't because of simple luck. It's because we realized they're going, okay, they're focusing on infantry section and they'll focus, and we countered. I knew that they, I lured them into traps. We used our own advantages. Sure, they made a couple mistakes by maybe early retreats, but I could say the same thing about us. We kind of moved units where we shouldn't have, and that could have costed us. Same thing with them. So, they made as many mistakes as we did. So, it, honestly, it's like, you can't say, it's like, oh, it, it, the perfect game, this is not. It's like, well, have you ever seen a perfect game? I've seen a couple of Empire Rommel and uh, Call of Duty Man's games, and I will tell you right now, there's there's no such thing as a perfect game. Every, for a game, for someone to lose a game, someone has to make a mistake at some, at somewhere. Also, I move up because I'm like, trying to find the Katusha. Realize they have a Firefly over here, and I'm like, oh, no. Hi, Firefly. I'm just going to back up. I'm just going to back up right now. Luckily, the Brumbar's over here pushing back the infantry. I'm going to move up more of my infantry. Um, fortunately, I do, at least I have more than this guy. So that's a plus. I'm trying to push up infantry here, but again, it's like, sorry, this is not going to work. And also, as you can see here, I have a ton of fuel. You're going to, you probably ask yourself, Grishaw, what are you getting? Well, I'm getting a King Tiger, but I've been kind of focusing on infantry resourcing, so I haven't been able to get it. Also, King Tiger now, for those who don't know, is 310. So, yeah, they buff, they, they definitely increase the fuel for that. Now, of course, we can see this guy trying to one last push over here. Luckily, my brother was kind of like, all right, we'll put mines and I'll keep a King Tiger over here. It's like, good luck. 
Now, here's the thing. Before you say, how do they fight this? Literally one Firefly with rockets probably could kill this thing. I'm not even kidding. Also, at this point, Maximum's like, peace, I'm out. Which I find really, really funny. Because um, now they're actually going to start doing a little better. A little bit. But not... But still. Um, it's funny, also. Like, again, it's like... He was doing pretty well for himself. And he had enough fuel to, I mean, like, it's not like he got a comet out of no, uh, sorry, not comet, a Churchill out of nowhere. Also, like, the brum bar coming through, he's like, he sees the artillery, and the yeah, average like, do 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 gotta move my brum bar so I can hurt your howitzer. Because, again, the how it does have this bunker buster, he's halfway to health, and also, if it kills this Katusha, will instantly upgrade the howitzer, three star now, and I want to show you this thing's range. Pretty long range, honestly. Pretty long range. Like, if he wanted to, he could probably turn this thing and start pounding my brother's base. Or at least his forward HQ points and stuff like that. But luckily, my brother's been able to keep his Volk squads alive, so that's a great comeback for him. I'm kind of fortifying this area. Sorry, I just got a notification on my smartwatch. Yeah, I got a smartwatch. I love it. It's great. Uh, that way, you don't have to pull up my phone. It's like, why you... Oh, it's like... Every time you look at your phone, I'm like, oh my god, did I just get an email? Did I get a text? What, what's this notification? I look at my watch, I'm like, oh, okay. I have a little thing stating that I got an email from so-and-so. Alright. I also like how we try to steal for Ken Warfare over here. The AI's like, yeah, we'll win. We can do this. We can win. We can do this. Also, I love how it was a commando unit that got inside, and the commandos were just being annihilated. Wait, does that mean if you put commandos in here that they'll have the same awesome ability, like, g firepower? Meaning that, like, you could get a Verken where they're technically close to a unit and it would kill it because it has the close range firepower? I'm actually curious. I, I hope it would do that. Now, of course, I have my own King Tiger now. I deployed it over here. I'm gonna hold this sector. That way they can't push up. Um, I'm gonna also hold this area. They do have a random AT gun over here, but I have my own forces over here. I mean, their own stolen AT gun along with my men. Firing a Suka, kind of trying to help over here. King Tiger moving up, trying to help out. In the meantime, unfortunately, my, they did manage to capture this. My brother wasn't. My brother refocused and kind of spread himself out to a little too thin, so they are capturing this territory. So they are coming in for a decent comeback. So actually, that was a good AI move. Like, the AI. Like, again, people forget about the smoke raid, but, you know. That's a decent ability. They're also deploying this, like, parachute glider thing, which I'm assuming they're doing over here because, again, they're firing smoke on all frontline sectors, which would have been a smart move to capture our territory. Alas, people are like, oh, let's go for the heavy bombers or for this mortar cover when actually the cheapest munitions thing probably might have been better. Nice Brumbar hit, by the way. Really surprised they don't do a bunker bus, but yeah, they made the case to talk out that thing. There's a Tiger Ace over here. We're essentially just, like, hitting them, and then I activate my Arty ability, which... Yeah, so you can see that coming down. This is that RD ability we're talking about, so that way they can't pick up any more men. Suka coming down, causing a lot of damage. And unfortunately, the Brumbar dies, but the Tiger's still here. Yeah. And I'm still holding my sector over here for many forces that we're holding over here. Making sure the Soviets don't come in. But the Soviet players are pretty much focusing on a different location. Luckily, I was able to beat him most of the time. If I, if I lost to this guy, we probably would have lost the game. But luckily, I was able to hold that point long enough. We didn't lose enough points. Which allowed my brother and Yaver to, I mean, Yaver came back a little quicker, but allowed my brother to literally just keep his men alive and build up a strong enough force to counteract and then do some nice blows. Uh, across some artillery. Uh, awesome blows against the enemy. Also, I love how he went like, oh, he used a 45mm against the, the tiger. Guess what? This tiger's armor is so thick that your little 45mm pea shooter isn't going to hurt it. Oh, boy. But, yeah, that's. Uh, yes, Centaur. Well, actually, probably would have been better against his units. And as you can see, they did actually take a lot of territory, so good job, AI. Anyway, we can see the best unit on their team was Maxim. 31,000 damage, 145 kills. Uh, worst was actually not Dante. I really thought he would, but he actually put up a decent fight damage-wise. Uh, Cube, and I can easily see that he lost a lot of his fortifications. 
Um, you want to make sure your fortifications are in a good location and that can easily be protected. I like areas that are like surrounded by cover. That way AT fire is not an obstacle for you. Um, so especially with mortars, there, he put a lot of his mortars just in open area and that allowed the average just instantly kill it with his AT, which is pretty good. Uh, instantly on my side, I was the best player. 40,000 damage, 184 kills. Again, if I had to say pack 43 was probably best. No Panther, 10,000 damage, 10 kills, never lost it. Again, try to keep your units alive. That really helps uh, win this game. Again, because we were able to kill, constantly keep killing their forces while we were able to keep ours alive. And before you say, but Grayshot, they didn't have the firepower to kill your units. They had the they had the heavy bombers, which they could easily deploy over here and kill my brother's stuff. They could have easily, easily used the heavy bombers to kill these bridges. Um, or they could have used the Firefly uh, missile launchers to kill these bridges. And you could also say, Grisha, why would they want to focus on the bridges? Why would you take those things out? You instantly cut off the supply routes over here and here. And while you have this territory, literally having this territory, cutting off these bridges would, would force me to come through this direction. Not sending my troops or the Panthers back and forth across this bridge. Which, by the way, if I were to take this guy's base, I would instantly knock out this bridge and this bridge. That way they couldn't come over here and help their ally out. That would be the first thing on my mind would be to take out the supply route. And before you say, oh, Grisha, they didn't have the firepower to take out the heavy tanks. They had so many fireflies with the rocket ability that they kept using. They actually killed a, a decent amount of, like, they did a mass amount of damage to our armor. The problem was they didn't focus. Like, they didn't, like, okay, I'll, I'll move in with rocket fire and we will... Uh, take out this tank and then you hit him with the SU-85. The SU-85 stayed back and didn't do anything. So yeah, if they were a little bit, they coordinated a lot more, they probably could have won, but they didn't really do that, which forced them to pretty much lose. Also, you could say, oh, Grisha, what, what they did, they, it was like, you know, that Pack 43 was OP. Yeah, the Pack 43 was OP for maybe the one unit it died, so they know about it. And then, of course, like, okay, they lost the SU-85, so now they know about it. It's like, okay, this Churchill is really dying. So it's like, at, at a certain point, you know that thing is in the area, so you may want to move is another thing. Uh, my brother did, brother did a nice job at countering the infantry section, which they did use a lot of heavy infantry section. So again, it's not like you could say, oh, they weren't good infantry. They're probably the best infantry in the game, and they did a really good job. The problem is my brother eventually countered and he used a lot of those infiltration grenades to really just turn the tide. And also, look, he kept his units alive. Well, as you can say with this guy and a cube, they did not. They sacrificed the units a lot more, and I feel like that was the thing that really screwed them. They also had the ability to really knock out our strategic points, but luckily, again, my brother and Yavert were able to keep a lot of their strategic points, including their bunker stuff like that, well hidden enough and behind enemy lines enough, they didn't have to, like, place it. Like, yeah, I lost my HQ eventually, but again, I kept... A lot of my bunkers kept being healed. I made sure that thing was alive for the longest time. My Pack 43 died from a direct airstrike from the heavy bomber unit. Um, the IL-2 bomber, I should say. The Soviet heavy bomber. But it's like, yeah, it's like I did everything I possibly could to keep that thing alive. So it's not like I can say, like, I failed. It's like, no, I made sure that they wasted a lot of precious resources taking out these key targets. So that's the, that's the best thing you can hope for is they divert so many forces and so many men to take out one unit. Uh, that they ended up losing a lot more than they possibly should to actually kill that unit. But yeah, that's pretty much game. I really hope you guys enjoy this. I thought this was a really entertaining game with an awesome comeback. And a really, really close game to say the least. But yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you next time.